Welcome back. Hope you're having a good morning. Prakash Sivan joins us to help us out with some fundamental analysis on the stocks that we just discussed. Uh, hi, Prakash. Uh, good morning and hope you had a good holy. Well, I wanted to ask you about mankind. You know, on Friday's trading session, towards the end, you saw a bit of a spike up. And now we understand that the P is looking to sell closer on 2.9% stake. Now, importantly, what this does is it increases the free float, which will result in inflows and a high possibility that the stock gets included in the MSCI. You know, I'm uh, reading an alternate note coming out of uh, Nuvama as well, and they are fairly positive on the stock. What's your view, Prakash? So the stock is not very, very cheap, but it appears this technical factor will play out in their favor. Good morning, Nigel. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's a wonderful opportunity to buy into a stock that's been out of reach, uh, A, because of valuation. Uh, ever since it got listed, it's, it's just been flying away. Uh, so from its peak, of course, it's available at uh, some sort of a you know cool off. The second thing is that the float has always been a worrisome point, in spite of a very strong uh, holding by institution. There's not much institutions can do to add to this this thing. But remember, from a business perspective, it's uh, though it's you know a late cover in the listed space. Uh, as a company, it's been doing wonderful work within the Indian market. It's it's one of the largest players in India. Um, doesn't get talked about much because, as I said, it has a very short history in the listed space. But going forward, the kind of scale-up that they have on the cards, the way they manage the capital allocation so efficiently, uh, it will always fetch a premium. You know, so if, if pharma is reviving, there's more allocation that's being uh, very clearly indicated by... Fund and look at, look at some of the turnarounds in the pharma space, especially the largest ones, uh, Nigel. You have Lupin from 750, 800 to 1600. Sun Pharma from just close to 1,000 to about 1,600. So you, you have a lot of salience that's been captured by portfolio managers uh, by allocating money into this thing. I think this, this will be an opportunity for people if there's that discount that is significant uh, or, or to its full capacity of 5%, I think it will be definitely worthy of getting into uh, from a medium to long-term perspective. I'm, I'm quite positive on the name, and I think this block will get absorbed by uh, institutional financial investors and not necessarily some a uh, strategic investor looking at FDI kind of uh, investments here. Beige, by the way, is an affiliate of uh, the private equity firm Chris Capital, and they're the ones which are looking to exit Mankind Pharma. Uh, Prakash, morning. What about Uno Minda? Uh, the news is they've entered into a technical agreement with Star Charge Energy for EV charging infrastructure. So basically, they will be making wall mounted chargers for home charging for residential use, and these will be sold along with the electric vehicles to the customers by the OEMs. Now, Uno Minda already has a fairly strong presence in two-wheelers OEMs uh, on the EV side. And now they're expanding their capabilities to include you know, EV charging for passenger vehicles also. Do you see this as a big positive for you know, Uno Minda, which can re-rate the stock? Good morning, Nima. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is coming right at the back of uh, you know, the uh, electric mobility policy changes that the government announced and ever since that has happened look at look at what's happening to the ancillaries there's not much of a uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call it, disruption that's happening on the oem side uh, there were worries that some of these largest oems which have gone the ev path like Tata motors and mahindra might face resistance but that's not likely to happen what's likely to happen is that the entire ecosystem will start uh, getting into place and some of these leaders, whether it's Sona, BLW on the component side, uh, Unominda now on the charging infrastructure side, they will uh, start enhancing capacity. And Star Charge is a very established technology. Uh, I've seen it at work. It's compact, it's efficient, it's user-friendly. There's no reason why with those kind of things, the EV sales don't move beyond this, you know, 7-8% that they're stagnating at to some, at least some respectable numbers in the mid-teens or late-teens. So my, my sense is that EVs are here to stay for at least the next three, four, five years. And, and without infrastructure, without the charging infrastructure, this won't happen. And there are very few companies in India who have indigenous technology to kind of scale up uh, on a mass utility base. So that's that's exactly why these JVs become more important. Of course, we'll have to you know, go through the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call the, uh, you know, the wordings of the arrangement, what kind of, you know, technology transfer is involved, what kind of stakes these companies would, uh, eventually land up with after uh, consummating this relationship. But it's a great step. So, yes, you know, you know Minda getting re-rated, huge potential, uh, huge possibilities uh, after uh, at the back of this particular development. 
So this Star Charge, I was just reading, they provide uh, char EV charging solutions to multiple OEMs like Mercedes-Benz, Porsche's yeah. one, Volkswagen, and they're already the leader in the Chinese market. Uh, and now Uno Minda has gotten into the tie-up with Star Charge, where they're targeting passenger vehicles, EV charging, for home consumption, residential use. Okay, so charged up. I guess that's the EV space <laughs> for us. Uh, Prakash, hi, good morning. Hope you had a good uh, long weekend and a good festival. Uh, just want to talk about uh, life insurance because as we were getting into this holy weekend, we finally got that news, right? That uh, the surrender value norms are not going to bite as hard as what was earlier feared. Any interest in these stocks? And in the last one month, I mean, they haven't run up uh, that much either. Uh, do you like any? Good morning, Shabhi. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, there is there is a very clear, uh, what do you call, a uh, overhang that's gone out. This whole thing of, uh, you know, the surrender value uh, norms getting kind of restored by uh, the IDA is, is definitely positive. It kind of takes away the entire, uh, you know, question of what's what's likely to be the terminal value for most of the embedded or the embedded value for most of the books that uh, these insurers sit on. Now, this will help people start looking at valuations uh, anew in, in the sense that you know that this is one factor that's out of the way. So it is very positive in the long term, of course. Uh, but if you ask me why the stocks haven't moved up in the last month or so, it's it's primarily because the focus has been on so many other things. These stocks usually uh, always take a backseat uh, when the market is in a very volatile or a very momentum-driven kind of a mood. You know, so th there's there's nothing that kind of changes for them on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. But of course, March end will probably reflect some very positive numbers. And I keep on saying, if you have to allocate money to this sector because this is a sector that's not going anywhere except up. You will have to take the basket approach. You really don't know which year, which company will do better. But if you buy into uh, ICSA Pro Life, you, you have a HDFC Life and you have an SBI Life, you kind of got mostly 60-70% of the representation covered. So that's that's the way to kind of play this. And of course, LIC is being, doing its own bit in terms of reviving itself on a lot of counts. And I've seen the changes that they're making on the digital front. So, you know, that accessibility, the ease of uh, usage, renewals, all of that, will also help them in some way. But of course, uh, you know, the private sector guys uh, definitely have much more demand, much more attractiveness from a stock perspective. And that's, that's where you could make some money in the next uh, year, year and a half as well. Okay, all right. Uh, Prakash, I wanted to ask you about JSPL. Our stock has been quite strong. The problem with the company has been the promoter entity, right? There's always been that uncertainty post the coal block saga that took place close to around uh, 10 years or so ago. Now we have uh, the promoter entity that's got additional charge in the ferry space itself. He's been appointed uh, about one of the top bodies in India here as the president. And also he's uh, moved to the BJP and will be contesting the Lok Sabha elections as well. Now that it always has traded at a valuation discount. Do you think that this valuation discount can narrow? And also we have seen that coking coal cost in the last week is down by close to 10%, which will be good for all, for all ferris players. So your pick. No, absolutely, Nigel. Lots happening uh, in this space. Uh, you know, while there is uh, the backdrop, is that there's news that the demand for steel makers is coming down in India. Things could be tough, uh, but the the prices, the stock prices, tell you a different story. And I've been talking about how Tata Steel and JSW Steel, which have very high efficient uh, efficiencies, you know, scaled up business models, are going to be favorably poised. JSP, of course, joins that uh, particular thing because one is, of course, you know, I'm not. Uh, sure whether, you know, just that change in the political stance is going to be uh, positive or negative, but it could be slightly positive for sure, if at least not negative. The other thing that's happening for JSPL is that they have a very scattered kind of a business model. They, the, the multiple facilities that they have, some of them are constrained for supply on uh, co co coal and the rest would have surpluses, so which they've been trying to kind of rationalize. So if that happens, because they don't have any large units in, in one or two places, unlike the other players. So that's that's where they've taken a little bit of a time, they've lagged behind this whole curve. But, uh, you know, by and large, if the government uh, is looking at spending so much on infrastructure, there's private capex that's likely to come. I don't see any reason why steel would be left behind. So uh, any dip in the steel uh, stocks is actually a good opportunity for you to buy. There, there seems to be some sort of a protection on the downside as, you know, the input prices also start kind of rationalizing. Uh, the only the only bummer in the case uh, is, is going to be if there's some policy around, uh, 
you know, uh, if there's some change in the Chinese stance towards global steel uh, dumping. Now, if that were to happen, then things would look a bit different. But otherwise, I think it's it's fairly priced. And and this coal mine thing we resume is going to help a lot of smaller companies also. If JSPL is not the only one. I mean, you, if you recall electro steel casting, you know, a lot of these guys guys are waiting for. Uh, 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 a lot of you know proceeds to come from you know to the extent of thousand crores for a small company like Electro Steel makes such a big difference. So those those kind of things will start happening, but we'll have to wait and watch for it to actually flow in uh, to to realize uh, how, how uh, uh, attractive uh, it gets into the balance sheet. But I'm I'm by and large very positive, but it'll be a bit of a tactical uh, acquisition. <clears throat> Prakash, actually, before we talk about Interglobe, another stock that I wanted to discuss with you is Adani Ports. It's had a phenomenal 2024, right? It's one of the strongest stocks in the Adani stable. They've uh, snapped up another port now, this time on the East Coast. Uh, and I think they're paying about equity value. They're paying around uh, 1,300 crores thereabouts. Your thoughts on what has been a pretty strong performer? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and look at where it is from, you know, the, the carnage of last year, uh, where... You know, this was probably the only stock which uh, wasn't under so much of a cloud in terms of doubting its uh, numbers and performance and all of that, because it's all real, right? Uh, we've seen uh, the cargo handling go up. They've, they've crossed phenomenal numbers. They've made new milestones in every passing quarter and month. And, and you know, the Dhamra acquisition, which uh, they paid uh, almost 9,100 crores uh, a few years back, took some time to actually operationalize. And when it has started doing, it's a significant contribution that it has the potential to make because of its vantage location. This Gopalpur port, again, uh, so we, let me tell you, is something which will uh, change the way trade happens from India. We, we haven't seen much of activity on the East Coast, uh, but the acquisition that they've been making, and, and even the JSW in, you know, infrastructure business is reached some 100 uh, million metric tons. It tells you that there's so much happening on the port side. Uh, that this this company will definitely uh, start kind of you know seeing some very very spectacular growth uh, numbers from here. I'm I'm quite positive on it, but you know the run up probably you know gives you a little bit of that bias. Uh, the price anchoring where you see much lower levels makes it difficult for people to buy into it. But on dips, this would definitely be something which you could add uh, going forward. Thanks. Uh, Prakash Crompton now hasn't really been much of a wealth creator. You know, even in a year where the mid-cap index is up some 60%, the stock has been extremely choppy and volatile. Now, there are some reports suggesting that we may have a bumper monsoon this year because of La Nina. Your thoughts on Crompton? So, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, Crompton, there, there's something that seems to be cooking up. Their focus on kitchen appliances uh, can definitely help. There's a vast market. Uh, it's just that they need to kind of establish themselves uh, with the Butterfly brand with that quality assurance that they come with their own brand. Uh, but uh, whether it will, you know, this move will have fans uh, to buy into the stock, I'm not too sure. And what happens is, you know, people bought into it with a huge expectation that this will go the same way as Crompton uh, Power did, uh, you know, CG Power did. I mean, that powered up for uh, various other reasons, which were absolutely disparate from what, uh, you know, from the consumer would have to face. So it will take some time is my guess. And, and I, I wouldn't buy something in anticipation of a good monsoon because there are far more uh, clear beneficiaries of that uh, because the broad consumption pattern hasn't yet changed, especially in the semi-urban rural markets. Would be. So, you know, that data doesn't really seem very encouraging as yet. But yes, it's good to see that the companies finally trying to get its act together in terms of uh, meeting those expectations. But uh, still too early to actually get a buy uh, uh, kind of a indication from this thing. Oh, okay. All right, uh, got that, Prakash. Thanks very much. Great to have you on this morning. You have a good trading day and we look forward to connecting again soon.